Welcome to episode number 271 of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Eilon, CEO of Greek University. I'm a speaker and a two-time author. Our second book is called From Letters to Leaders, Redefining New Member Education and Leveraging Belonging to Eliminate Hazing. So go and pick up that book on Amazon today. We call these interviews the Fraternity Foodie Podcast because there is nothing like great food to bring fraternity and sorority leaders together. Fun fact, my next guest and I, we met through a mutual friend on Instagram of all places. Paige over at Greek Town App said that the two of us would get along great and boy, was she right. She is the master connector. And we've been supporting each other as creators on Instagram and TikTok. And I have to tell you, I just really love Kelsey's merch. I mean, she's got some great stuff that you have to go and check out for your own chapter. So our next guest is Kelsey Woodhouse. She is the founder and owner of Good Golly Greek. She is a graduate of Northern Arizona University. She is a proud member and alumnus of AO Pi Sorority, and she creates custom letters for fraternity and sorority members, as well as merch for college students all over the country. Welcome to the show, Kelsey. Thank you for having me, Mike. Of course, it's my pleasure. I am so glad that we get to spend some time together. Usually we're interacting on social media. So just spending time together with you is just a, a big treat for me because I love your mission. I love the products that you create for fraternity and sorority leaders. So uh, I'm just excited to have you on the show. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> So, all right, so let's go back. I mean, you decided on Northern Arizona University for your undergraduate experience. I know our listeners are thinking, well, why did she choose NAU? Yeah, so originally I chose NAU for an undergraduate degree um, that would get me into a specific master's program with athletic training. And I actually ended up changing my major my sophomore year. And I chose to stay, one, because of my sorority sisters. They really got me to stay. But NAU and their campus is beautiful, it's gorgeous, and it's just a one-of-a-kind place in the Arizona mountains. It's beautiful. Yeah, no, there's no question about it. It is absolutely stunning. But, I, you know, I really liked what you said that, you know, really you wanted to stay because of your sorority sisters. I mean, mm -hmm. you were not going to abandon them. And, you know, anytime I start thinking about fraternity and sorority, yes, definitely not perfect. There are definitely issues within fraternity and sorority. But at the end of the day, I mean, that's really what anchored you to NAU. You were not going anywhere without your sisters. And you know what? I think that is something that we need to talk about more often because I do believe in a time when we're talking about student engagement, in a time when we're talking about um, you know, going through the pandemic and online learning and students basically saying, you know what, I don't need this. Um, or even, you know what, the job market is good. I'm just going to like walk away from college and just go straight into my job without graduating. Fraternity and sorority is anchoring the students to your campus. And I mm -hmm. think in terms of engagement, we're perfectly aligned with what the university wants. Yep. Yeah, so. there's a higher percentage of return rate for students when they're in an organization like a fraternity or sorority because they have that reason to come back, not just from their major. Most places you can get an education at any school, but it's the people that bring you back to campus. Totally agree there. And you joined one of my favorites, Alpha Omicron Pi, which is headquartered in Brentwood, Tennessee, right down the road from me here in Franklin. Um, and so I'm wondering what made you want to join this particular group of women as opposed to maybe some of the other organizations on campus? Yeah, ultimately, I really accepted my bid from AOPI because all of the women that I spoke to during recruitment were very genuine. They weren't hiding behind anything and even on bid day just talking to more of the women because the chapters at any are quite large so even just getting a chance to talk to more of those handful that i did during recruitment was amazing and i really saw how genuine they were and the diversity i am a plus size woman and seeing the diversity within the chapter made me feel very welcome mm. yeah we need to talk about that more i mean you know that diversity is just so important. It's certainly one of the reasons why I stayed in my fraternity because everybody that was there, I mean, talk about different races, religions, country of origin, sexual orientation. I mean, you name it, we had it. And I just feel like 
it made me comfortable. It made mm -hmm. me feel like, you know what, like I belong here. I have a space here. People are, are here and they're going to be able to learn from me and I'm going to be able to learn from them as well. So I felt like it's putting me in a situation where, you know what, I'm going to I'm going to meet people that maybe I ordinarily wouldn't be friends with. Mm -hmm. And I grew to appreciate everything that they brought to the table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that is just so, so important. Um, so, you know, you've been doing crafting on Etsy for over seven years at Custom K's Crafts. I'm sure our audience is wondering this too. How did you decide to get into the crafting business? So I've always been crafty as a kid. Um, my mom always had stuff for me and my sister to do. My sister is also very creative. So we always were crafting and then going into college, being in a sorority, I was always making canvases or things to do for my own decoration, but for my big other sorority sisters. And it turned into a really good stress reliever for me in college. I took the time to be creative and have that outlet. I said, mm, might as well, let's see how I do on Etsy. Didn't really sell much because I did it more for my sorority sisters than anything else, but it was kind of like my first step into the entrepreneurship space that's awesome i mean i love how you did that i think that's great i'm sure many other fraternity and sorority leaders who are listening right now they're thinking about their own businesses and maybe what's possible but you're proof that you can actually take something that you're passionate about and turn it into a full-fledged business right yeah exactly oh that's awesome so now you've made this move into greek licensed gear as well mm -hmm. so that's under good golly greek talk to our audience about the types of merchandise that you create here how is the merchandise that they get from you different from maybe other vendors in this niche yeah so i do everything from like big little t-shirts all the way to the stitch or block letters um, my patterns are very trendy. They're very unique. I also work one-on-one -on -one with people. So if they don't see a pattern they, they'd like on my website, I'll work with them to find a pattern, make sure it gets licensed and it's approved, and then go ahead through the process and make it. But the biggest thing that makes me different than most of the niche is I'm very size inclusive. And it's very, very difficult to be size inclusive, especially in the apparel industry. I try my hardest and it's some days it's really difficult, but it's working with the vendors that makes it the hardest out of everything. But that's my biggest difference is I want to make sure that anyone, any size, any shape can have those trendy apparels, can have that stuff that they love not that makes them fit in, but makes them feel really good about themselves and that they can wear anytime and be proud to wear their letters on campus. I love that mission. I think it's great. And you're obviously passionate about advocating for plus size women within Greek life. And I'm thinking back to when you joined, I'm sure there was a ton of anxiety when you were meeting some of the sororities on campus. So in your opinion, from the sorority side, how do we make the recruitment process more inclusive for plus size women? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is remembering that you're recruiting, especially for sororities, because it's very image oriented. Mm -hmm. You are recruiting women or trans or non-binary, whoever you want to recruit, you're recruiting them based off of their values. What do you see in that woman or in that person that is going to connect you to your own chapter and help your chapter grow? That is ultimately what you are recruiting. And on the more materialistic side, make sure you have different sizes for the women or people joining your chapters, whether it's on your own side for branding packages or recruitment t-shirts and even bid day t-shirts and i'm even talking making sure you have a few extra smalls all the way through to three four x you can always utilize the extra shirts from some fun craft items but being able to provide your members and future members with those items is very very helpful and extremely welcoming Mm -hmm. All right. So that's really good advice from the sorority side, things that they need to think about in order to be more inclusive. Now let's shift to the person who's going through recruitment. What advice do you have for plus size women who are going through this recruitment process this fall? 
Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit of the same as being on the recruitment side. You want to be yourself. You ultimately just want to be yourself because these chapters want to see who you are as a person. And fashion wise, be comfortable, dress what makes you feel comfortable, what you feel confident in, what you think you look like amazing in, because when you feel comfortable like that, it shows. People see it and they understand it and they say, okay, she's feeling great about herself. Like she's very confident. We love that. So just take the time to be confident, find something that you love and that makes you feel good when you're wearing it and just go for it. I love that. That's fantastic. Now, not everything, you know, works out perfectly. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I've heard all kinds of stories about um, people going through recruitment, not finding the right home. Um, and certainly, you know, body image is a big part of sorority recruitment, like we talked about. Um, what can you do if somebody upsets you or maybe hurts you regarding your body image? Yeah, I think the for me personally, I, it's definitely the biggest thing that I've happened or that I have done, I should say, is just have a discussion with someone. Um, if you've already gone through recruitment and it's a sorority sister, talk to them because they might not know what they've said has affected you. But on the other side, it may also be someone else's own insecurities that they're kind of lashing out on. So overall, just having an understanding, but being open to having discussions. If you talk to someone, a lot of the times they don't realize what they're saying hurts you. Mm -hmm. so if you tell them, okay, this really hurt my feelings or it really bothered me, can you please not say it next time? Things like that really helps and it, it opens a dialogue for not just you and that one person, but people around you will see that there are things that hurt you and they will learn how to be positive. Yeah. We all have our insecurities. That's the thing. I mean, people, you know, might not know it. Maybe it's, you know, physical, maybe it's something you can't even see. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I think that goes for everybody. And I think um, having those conversations, people start to realize, oh, okay, well, I'm really insecure about X, Y, Z, whatever that is. Um, and then we have this common ground where we can kind of talk about some of those things a little bit more and figure out how we can be more inclusive um, mm -hmm. as opposed to making people feel somehow less than. Um, but how do we change the culture on college campuses? Because you know, I mean, there are these anonymous websites like Yik Yak that are contributing to these tiers that we see within Greek life. And it also seems like hazing and other bad behavior is severely impacting our organization. So how do we change the culture? As a chapter internally, the more positive work you do and the more that you recruit those women or even fraternities men that have those leadership skills that you see having those ways to contribute to the chapter the more positive it is internally and the better your structure is internally you're going to start creating a standard for the greek community to see and externally, I think Greek chapters really need to discuss the positives of Greek life because typically people just see the, the negatives, the hazing, the alcohol, the, the partying, but there's so much more to it. There is the networking, the leadership skills, there's the, I like networking is probably one of the biggest ones, but there's so many skills you learn in a sorority and fraternity that you take out into the working world that you don't know until you're out there. But it, the more you speak about it to the community and the more alumni go back to the chapters or even campuses and talk about it, the better the positive light will go towards these chapters. So people understand there are way more positives than there are negatives in Greek life. Yeah, I'm with you. I mean, I think we need to start investing in you know PR, I think our budget for PR is usually mm -hmm. a thing in fraternity and sorority life. We have to find the right person to be a chairman for PR. I think all too often we just give it to somebody random. Maybe they lost the election for exec board and we're like, all right, yep. why don't you just do PR? Um, no, like we have to make sure that we actually have a job description and it actually fits this person's skill set. Mm -hmm. um, we need training, you know, again, I mean, what kind of training are we offering in terms of PR? Usually the answer is nothing. 
Yeah, um, yeah. And what are the goals? I mean, you know, if we want good PR, how do we measure that we're actually making progress for good mm -hmm. PR? Um, and so I think there's a lot of things that we need to be doing. Um, and certainly even, you know, the school newspaper. I mean, if you're saying, seeing that you have this negative um, connotation or stereotypes in the media, let's say in your local uh, school paper, well, then why aren't we running and basically going to the school paper and saying, you know what, I'm going to volunteer, I'm going to write stories once a week, and just start flooding it with positive uh, stories where, you know, we're collecting from every fraternity and sorority on campus and publishing a different story from a different chapter every week. That's exactly <laughs> how we were yep. able to kind of change the narrative on my campus. But I think we need to take control of the narrative rather than sitting back and saying like, woe is me, why is it always, you know, the negative stuff? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, all right, so, so we talked about changing the culture on college campuses. I mean, we talked about your mission, which I think is absolutely fantastic. Love all of your designs. So, I mean, definitely go and take a look at uh, some of the designs for Good Golly Greek on Instagram, on TikTok. I mean, you're absolutely gonna love it because it is so custom. Um, I love how you do all of your stuff and I love the videos and like just watching the process of your machine actually creating these things. I mean, it just totally blows me away. I mean, you know, I guess, you know, my last question would be like, how did you like, how did you get the right machinery? Like, how were you able to do all of that? I feel like I wouldn't even know where to begin. A lot of research, <laughs> especially for the big machine. The big machine is pretty much a car. Mm -hmm. So for something like that, it's a giant investment. I did a lot of research. I spoke to people that had different kinds of machines. But I, I honestly have so many different kinds of machines in my space. It's insane. And it's kind of been built up over the years. And I've played with new stuff. I have a machine I haven't even unboxed yet. So it's it's quite a bit of just playing around with it. But especially as a business, you have to invest yourself to expand and grow. So if I can do that investment and that investment for that machine has been a miracle for me. So it's it's been amazing it's really fun um not just for greek letters when i do other stuff too for like gifts and other things it's really fun to play with and watch watch what the final final product is yeah it is really cool there's a huge invest investment on your side in the machinery and then you know you've also shown some TikToks of all your inventory i mean mm -hmm. i'm blown away at how much stuff you have the glitter, the, oh my gosh, yeah. all of that stuff is just incredible. So go and check that out on Good Golly Greek, whether you're on TikTok or Instagram. And I'm telling you, these, these things will just totally blow you away. Now, we do love good food here at the Fraternity Foodie Podcast, and you're in the Charlotte, North Carolina area. What is the best restaurant in town that I need to try the next time that I'm in the Charlotte area? Yeah, so I actually can't have dairy. Very sad I grew into it. So I know the wonders of dairy. Uh, but I stumbled upon a vegan burger place. Now, at first, you might be like, mm, really? Like, I, what? It is one of the best places I have ever had. I am a meat eater still. It tastes exactly like a burger. My mom, who has no restrictions, absolutely loves it. And they're an extremely small business. They started off as a food truck. They now have two brick and mortars on top of it. They're locally owned, black owned, wonderful, wonderful place. And they're called Romeo's Burgers. Romeo's Burgers. They have the best stuff ever. And I'm telling you, if you can swing by and do it, they are amazing and so good. <laughs> I love it. Romeo's Burgers. I am going to be coming to town to check it out. Um, I love it. I really need to be like starting to stay away from animal proteins. And so if I can find a healthier alternative, yep. I think my health is going to uh, really appreciate it. My family's going to love it. Uh, I have a daughter who's a vegetarian and always looking for different uh, protein sources. So I love every bit of it. I'm definitely going to go and try some burgers over there. I promise you. You're so good. <laughs> yeah, it sounds really good. Now it's like lunchtime and I'm starting to yeah. think about how hungry <laughs> I am. All right. So where can our listeners go to purchase your craft items on Etsy, buy your Greek life merchandise, or just connect with you? 
Yeah, so for purchasing anything, they can go to our website at goodgollygreek.com and Etsy as well. It's the same, Good Golly Greek. Um, if they want to contact us, ask us questions, do a personalized one-on-one -on -one customization for an order, they can DM us on Instagram, TikTok. We also have an email or they can use the contact us on our website. So we have lots of resources. That's fantastic. I tell you what, Kelsey can come up with anything. So if you are creative and you have a vision of what you want your merch to look like, just describe it to Kelsey and I'm telling you she's going to be able to do it for you um, because I've just seen her work and it's just magic. I'm just blown away at some of the designs and the creativity is just uh, fantastic. So Kelsey, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for your support of Greek life. I absolutely love all of it. I love your mission in terms of uh, inclusivity for plus size women within Greek life, uh, which is just so important. So thank you for shedding a light on all of it. And thank you for being you. I, I just think you're a fantastic person and I'm honored that you were on the show. Thank you very much. I appreciated it so much and I had so much fun. You got it, Kelsey, anytime. And to our listeners, if you enjoyed this conversation with Kelsey and you're looking for other merch, you know, be sure that you like this on social media. Make sure you share this with the other men and women in your fraternity, sorority chapter, your university, other students that might be looking for some really cool merch. Make sure you share it with all of them. And we hope to see you on another episode of the Fraternity Foodie Podcast. Thanks so much for joining us and we will see you next time.